Here is a modified version of that sentence. Animals often have an incredible sense of who to trust. This dying tiger cried out for help. What happened next is incredible. Everything felt so calm and quiet in Luca's secluded mansion. Which was often cut off from the rest of the world during the winter months. At that moment I suddenly heard a loud noise outside the door. He wanted to see it, but the area he lived in was still very wild and he had to be careful. Both human and animal encounters can be dangerous. If you are alone and have no one around to help you in a difficult situation. He pulled out a shotgun and slammed open his door. This weapon isn't lethal but hopefully the noise will deter any malicious activity. He opened the door but then a low growl stopped him. He knew the sound that IT was a tiger but by the sound it made. It was probably a very large tiger. He hurried back inside. But when he looked out the window he saw the poo. Our tiger lying on the cold floor. He seemed unable to even get up. He looked up but that alone kept him moaning in pain. He was close to home but even from there. Luca saw no obvious signs of trauma. Still, something was clearly wrong. This was a huge tiger but it was very weak and in pain. Luca could not leave the animal alone. His heart could not bear to hear the moans of pain. He immediately tried to call several animal shelters and rescue centers. But most were unable to reach the farm due to the first snow. The rescue center was ready to arrive immediately. But it took over an hour to arrive. Luke is torn apart, the tiger seemed to be in urgent need of help. What can be done? He wanted to help this poor animal. But he also knew it was a full-grown tiger. An animal that big could easily be torn apart. Those legs looked bigger and their jaws were even scarier to look at. I had no intention of going outside to check on the animals. No one knows how it will react to Luke's presence. At this point all he could do was wait. This was the longest time in his life all he wanted was to kill him. The tiger was so close to the house that she opened the window and tried to throw in some small pieces of meat. But those who landed near the tigers were also sniffed and ignored. I wasn't interested in eating. Luca broke the window trying to use the bottle. He sprayed a small puddle on the ground next to the tiger. He raised his head and took a sip, then he dropped his head to the floor with a thud. The simple act of drinking water seemed to completely deplete all his energy. It was sad to see this majestic creature so prostrate. Luca couldn't get close enough to take a closer look at the tiger. But he could see the giant creature trembling. Luca sighs in relief as he finally hears the truck drive down the driveway. But Tora wasn't as pleased with the newcomers as Luke was. He tried to get up, but he kept falling. He panicked when other people were around. Wounded animals are usually more dangerous. But in this case the tiger was too weak to fight back. Luca was very scared of other humans. But he seemed to calm down when he spoke. Quietly through the window. Then one of the shelter staff calmed him down with a dart gun. He soon fell asleep. At last they were able to examine him. Luca went outside to see what happened. When he picked up the tiger's paw. Luke was shocked, the tiger had a large. Hairless scar on its leg, for the first time. Luca understood why the tiger came to him. It turned out that they had met before. At that time he called the tiger Kato. It all started about three years ago. At that time Luca still had his old dog. He had to let the dog out. But then it started growling at something and she ran off into the woods. At that time she was unable to walk long distances. It would be fatal for a dog to escape into the cold forest. Her Luke was worried about her and followed her to make sure she was safe. The dog has gone farther than he expected. She was about to leave his land when he caught up. She barked at something on the ground. He used to be able to catch the snake. But now he was worried that it was too late to catch. It and that he would end up risking it anyway. So he quickly approached to save the dog. 
he went into the snow to see what she showed him. And she found a little tiger trapped. He never set a bear trap on his land. But someone must have set one there. A bear cub was seriously injured by a trap. He was severely injured where he was pinched between his legs. And his mother tiger was never seen. Luca spoke softly to the dog which calmed him down. Then he carefully took the hatchling out of the trap and wrapped it in his coat. There was blood everywhere. Luke didn't know if he could save the boy. Luca spent days exploring the area and found no new tiger tracks in the snow. Her mother tiger saw her own baby seriously injured. And she seemed to walk away. She probably had other cubs to protect. But she was too cold to be with a captive baby. It wouldn't have lasted all night if it hadn't been for Luke's dog leading him to the boy. But even then I wasn't sure if they could save the little tiger. He was so small that he still had to feed. And the scar on his front leg looked terrible. Luca called the local animal shelter. But the snow was too deep for any of the animals to reach the farm. He will have to take care of the injured baby by himself. He named the boy Cato and took care of him. A veterinarian from the shelter came over and gave me some tips on how to care for and feed the baby. They also gave him a list of medicines for the bear cub. He was so small that he didn't need too many things. And Luke prepared for the winter. So he had everything he needed. But just because he had all the supplies didn't mean he was sure of success. On the contrary, the tiger cub was seriously injured. And all the time he survived was a surprise to Luke. Luca gave the boy the milk mixture he had on hand for other animals. He mixed half the sleeping pills and the baby calmed down. Then Luke cleaned his wound and sewed it up. He had an infection so he had to clean up for several days. For the first few days, the cub just lay there a. And he let Luca do whatever he wanted. But as Tiger got stronger, he wasn't satisfied. When Luca tried to wipe his wounds, he was biting and scratching. After all, Luca had to wear thick gloves to wipe the wound. Still, it was kind of heartwarming to see my baby grow stronger and more active. Until Luca examines the Tiger box. Here's a modified version of that sentence. In the morning I found him not responding. Something was seriously wrong. I didn't have time to ask for advice. He had to do something instincts and first aid training begins. And Luca begins chest compressions on the tiger. It took a long time for the tiger to react. But eventually Kato began to wake up. When his condition stabilized. Luca called him and told him that he might. Have an infection and that he could still die. He needed antibiotics. Between eating and caring for the boy. Cato began to trust Luca completely. Like the dog, he could also put the medicine in his mouth and give it to the boy. Cato and the dog took naps together and became best friends. Mr. Luca was very worried about taming the little one too much. But he didn't know what else to do. He had the child cared for. But he was too cold to leave him outside without much contact. When spring came, the children grew bigger and bigger. His wound healed but left an ugly scar and he was perfectly healthy. His hair never grew back. And he seemed to be a lifelong reminder of this difficult start in life. But as soon as it warmed up, Cato disappeared for several days. Luca had never been taught to hunt by her mother. And was worried that he would not be able to take care of himself. However, Cato immediately brought the first bird. He caught into the garden and ate it before Luke's eyes. He learned to take care of himself and became a real tiger. He began to go out for a long time. But one day Cato did not come back. He became independent and no longer needed Luke's help. Luca would miss the tigers. But he was happy to live the life he deserved out in the wild. Over the years, Cato made several brief appearances at Luca's mansion. He never got too close to Luca. But he was never aggressive either. 
He's not a pet so he could come and go as he pleases. Luca always kept an eye on him at a safe distance. But never interfered that IT had been two years since he last saw a large tiger. And Luca had been worried that something had happened to him. Things have changed. Luca was old and lost. His beloved dog and was still too sad to get a puppy. He was determined to have a new companion after the winter. When Cato returned to his life. His anxiety increased when he saw how badly he looked. As this giant tiger turned out to be Cato. When the rescue team examined the tiger. With a concerned look on its face, it turned out that something was really wrong. The tiger's teeth were infected and it was pretty serious. They knew how painful and dangerous he must have felt in the wilderness. And felt a mixture of fear and pity. They explained to Luca that Cato had either gotten into a fight with another animal guarding his territory, or had been injured while hunting. The pulp inside some of his teeth was exposed and in very poor condition. Possibly causing a bacterial infection. It seems that the injury was not treated for a long time. The situation was urgent and we needed to find a way to treat infections quickly. They knew they had to act quickly to save him from the worst possible consequences. It was a race against time and they were determined to win and save his life. Usually the shelter just injects the animal with antibiotics and leaves. But the infection was too severe to be treated with a vaccine. He needed medicine for several days to restore his strength. They take Cato to the reserve and decide to help him. Luca was relieved that the tiger would help him. But he was a little sad that he could not save the tiger this time. Others will take care of him. When they started picking him up. He suddenly started moving again. He opened his eyes and grunted softly. All the rescuers moved quickly to escape the tiger. Apparently they weren't giving him enough sedatives to keep him asleep. They had to shoot him down again. They then tried to load Kato onto the truck. The big cat was so heavy that it wasn't easy. Normally we use a special crane. But to be exact, we didn't have one. They set up a rope system to help get the tiger onto the truck. Eventually they loaded up and the team drove off the farm. It felt really strange to see her gone, Luca felt responsible for Kato. He just wanted the tiger to succeed. The next day he called the shelter for an update. They drained the abscess in the tiger's mouth. And gave it plenty of water and soft food to help it grow stronger. He started eating again which should help him get back on his feet. It was clear that he was getting better. Luke was very happy. That was exactly what he wanted to hear. But it wasn't long before he received the disturbing news. The next day, when he asked for updates, he was told that the tiger had escaped the reserve. Luke couldn't believe it, how could that happen? They explained how the tiger escaped. The tiger was still in the clinic in a small enclosure. He got a lot stronger but still needed care. Then one of the students volunteering for the reserve walked near the tiger. Cato seemed almost meek and the boy tried to get too close to him. Usually students don't get left behind by big animals. But for some reason this student got left behind. He opened the gate and approached Cato's head. Big mistake, Cato growled because he didn't know him. The boy was so frightened that he ran out of the enclosure without closing the gate. Then the tiger can escape from there. He was strong enough to disappear from the premises in an instant. Added urgency as he still urgently needs medicine. Miles away from safe territory. The rescue team held their breath. Hoping they didn't accidentally wander into farmland or encounter unsuspecting humans in an area where farmers hate predators. Potential danger weighs heavily on them as word spreads. That Cato has fled the reserve, there was a sense of urgency. Rescue teams were on high alert and fully aware of the risks involved. They knew that the tiger was weakened by an infection and was in the field. Miles from safe territory. Concerns were heightened given the potential for. 
unsuspecting human encounters and the dangers associated with encroaching on agricultural land. With a mixture of fear and determination, the team went in search of Cato. They combed the surrounding area, setting traps and using tracking devices to look for tracks of the majestic tiger. They worked with local authorities to break the news and alert the community. Their days of tirelessly roaming the countryside, hoping for a breakthrough turned into nerve-wracking weeks. Rescue teams knew that every moment counts. With each passing moment, Cato risks dying from an infection if he is not treated. Then one fateful afternoon, a farmer on the outskirts of town reported a sighting. Cato was seen at the edge of a nearby property, cautiously navigating unfamiliar terrain. The team rushed to the scene with tranquilizers and a well-thought-out plan. They worked meticulously, wanting to ensure the safety of both the tigers and the surrounding communities. As they approached Cato, their hearts were racing, knowing that sudden movements could lead to potentially dangerous encounters. But luck was on their side that day. The tranquilizer arrow hit its target and Cato's succumbed to its effects and fell into a deep sleep. The team acted quickly to secure this majestic creature and return it to the reserve. Upon arrival, shelter staff greeted an exhausted rescue team, ready to continue nursing Cato back to perfect health. The tiger was immediately moved to a safe and spacious enclosure with all necessary medical equipment. As days turned into weeks, under the watchful eye of dedicated veterinarians and caregivers, Cato made steady progress. His infection was treated and his strength gradually returned. The day has finally come for Cato's release. Sanctuary staff carefully selected a suitable site. A vast wilderness teeming with life that could be reclaimed in nature. As Cato disappeared into the wild, its gigantic silhouette blending into the natural landscape, the reserve team felt a deep sense of accomplishment. They knew they had played a key role in giving this extraordinary tiger a second chance at life or more specifically a third chance. This dying tiger was lucky. His life was saved twice by caring people, and Luca, the man who first saved Cato many years ago, stood in the middle of the reserve staff to witness. The majestic tigers returned to the wild. Although they parted ways, the influence of Luca on Cato's life cannot be denied. Cato's story has spread far and wide and captured the hearts of people around the world. It is a testament to the power of compassion, resilience and tireless dedication of people like Luca and the sanctuary staff. I hope today's wonderful story inspires you. Thank you for visiting, see you next time. They threw the old donkey into the wolf cage and sentenced him to death. What happened next was unbelievable. In Albania, donkeys are traditionally used for various humble jobs. They are usually used for the transportation of guns and people. Especially in mountainous areas where vehicles are not practical. While the practice may have been significantly reduced in most areas. It is still rampant in rural areas. Most of these donkeys suffer from abuse and unremitting labor. Perico is such a donkey that I end this case, he is seriously overworked. He is owned by a group of farmers in a small Albanian village called Paddock, where the main source of income for most people remains agriculture. The village is located halfway up the mountain, and donkeys are more suitable for transportation in hilly areas than bicycles or trolleys. The grey donkey was bought from a local breeder at an early age and has worked tirelessly ever since. He was trained to pull carts and carry goods for villagers. At first, Perico found the job difficult and tiring. He had to pull a heavy trolley full of vegetables and goods. And sometimes the road was steep and rocky. But as time went on, the industrious animal grew stronger and more skilled. And he began to take pride in his work. His daily routine is the same. It began when his master called him when the first 
ray of sunshine began to pass through the trees. Then they would prepare a day's work for him. And he would get a small amount of food before they set out. The donkey's owner will load his cart with all kinds of goods. From bags of flour to boxes of fresh produce. Perico is a strong donkey and he can carry the weight without complaining. When the car is loaded, the donkey and one of his owners will begin their journey through the country. They would snake through fields, forests and hilly trails, stopping at farms and markets along the way to deliver goods. As time goes by, Perico will feel tired. But he never complains. He knows that his work is very important. And he is proud of being able to help. So, he will force himself to move on. Even if his legs are sore and his stomach coos with hunger, Perico spent most of the day pulling trolleys and waits up and down the rugged terrain, just taking a break to drink water. He doesn't get tired easily and works hard. Earlier in the day, after pulling the cart, he worked in his master's field at night. Whenever night falls and stars appear, Perico returns to his comfortable stable. After a hard day's work, he would lie on his straw bed. His eyes are heavy with fatigue. And he will slowly enter a quiet sleep. Then, he will wake up early the next day and continue his daily work. Although Perico worked as hard as he could, his breeder didn't appreciate him and sadly didn't know when to stop. As time went on, his rest time became shorter and shorter. Until he had almost no time to rest. His master was slow to feed him. And sometimes did not trim his hooves. Donkey has lived at home for more than 20 years. And years of hard work soon made him physically exhausted. Naturally, as he grew older. He became weaker and weaker. And could no longer work as hard as before. As the years went by, Perico began to slow down. His joints are not as flexible as before. And he finds himself tired more easily than before. But even so, the donkey never lost his enthusiasm for life. He continued to work hard. Enjoying the simple pleasures of country life. Such as drinking a cup of cool water on a hot. Summer day or covering himself with a warm blanket on a cold winter night. But his body doesn't compare with his positive attitude. One day, when the donkey was pulling the cart up the mountain. He was so weak that he was crushed by the weight of the cart and fell to the ground. His master urged him to get up, and Perico tried his best because he didn't like his master to be angry with him. But he couldn't stand up anymore. The donkey did not move angry and disappointed. The master took the donkey home and put him in his corral. One of them called the local vet who came to examine the donkey. The doctor arrived and treated the donkey. But just before he left, he reminded them of the donkey's age and advised them to greatly reduce his workload. Perico's owners were frustrated when they received the news. But they followed the doctor's advice. Donkeys don't go out to work anymore. They gave him food and water every day and left him in the corral. The wolf howled and pushed the cage. But the cage did not move and no one came to save it. After trying every means to get away without success, the wolf had to turn to his fate. Frustrated and tired, the workers took turns feeding him and watching him every day. He became their source of entertainment. They would feed him and howl so he would howl back. Wolves don't like being played by people and roar at them. He just wants to go home. After being locked up for about four days, the poor animal became tame. And it just stared at the people in frustration. Whenever they came to make fun of him. He would roar at them, Perico, on the other hand. Remained unharmed in his corral. The donkey had enough time to regain his strength. And even looked better than ever. His master, however, was not pleased with the development. They didn't like him to eat without working. And let him work in the field several times. One day, one of them came up with a terrible idea. He suggested that they keep the donkey in the wolf's K. 
cage and see what happens. Unexpectedly. They all agreed point one of them brings Perico to his side. Pushes him towards wolves together. And then closes the door again. What happened next was completely unexpected. When Perico's owners returned. They saw a very ugly scene. Instead of fighting, the two animals snuggled up to each other. Soon, the wolf and the donkey became best friends. The two animals formed an indissoluble bond. Because of their common experiences. And found comfort in each other. These people can't believe what they see. They want animals to fight with each other or something else. Especially because they are sworn enemies in the wild. They don't think these animals will make friends. The unlikely friendship spread through the village. And many felt sorry for the animals. Soon, a large number of people signed the petition and submitted. Letters to the Albanian government. Due to the public outcry. The government ordered these people to release. The captive wolves back into the wild. Perico was sad to see him leave. But he also had a happy ending. He was taken to a new home. Where he didn't have to work and could be taken good care of. He was also relocated to a green pasture with plenty of food and water at all times. The wolf often comes to greet his friends. And they will spend happy and happy hours together. They are still friends and live happily in their newly gained freedom.